Good evening. My name is Agnes Xu Tang. I am the executive chair of the Asia Society Triennial. Thank you for joining us tonight for this special performance created by our composer in residence, Fang Ruo, and curated by Ken Tan, Asia Society's executive director for global artistic programs, and also our deputy museum director. Ken will interview Huang Ruo immediately following the performance. On this day, July 9th in 1776, the Declaration of Independence was read to a crowd of New Yorkers and Continental troops at the gathering place where New York City Hall stands today. Soldiers and civilians alike cheered in unison and to celebrate their freedom in action, they came together to bring down, to tear down a nearby statue of King George III to demonstrate their newfound independence. This historic event on July 9th was later memorialized by artist J. Adam Simon Ortel in his masterpiece painting aptly named pulling down the statue of King George III, New York City. In this powerful image about freedom, Ortel depicts a young African-American man as a central figure in a crowd of patriots, manifesting the abolitionist idea that freedoms guaranteed in the Declaration of Independence apply to all Americans, regardless of color. I speak to you tonight from Sedona, Arizona. Behind me is the Boynton Canyon, a sacred place where some of the first Americans, the Yavapai, the Western Apache, the Hopi, the Navajo peoples, all regard as the birthplace of mankind in their creation myths. On this day, when we commemorate the independence of America. We must also remember the first Americans who lived and flourished on this land long before European colonization. They fought the first American revolution for independence in 1680. Their descendants have endured centuries of systemic cultural obliteration, ethnocide, and abandonment, including most recently during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Navajo Nation, just two hours away from here, was an epicenter because historically, 40% of its residents, even today, have been denied the legal right to access to water. The brutal reality was that they could not even wash their hands. In the wake of the nationwide Black Lives Matter protests responding to the police murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and other Black people in this country, and on this anniversary of American independence, we must reflect on and confront the painful truth that 244 years after the founding of this nation, Black, Indigenous, people of color in America are still being suffocated, literally and metaphorically, by historical systemic racism. As a gesture of solidarity with Black, Indigenous, people of color Americans in our common fight for equality and justice, we present a musical meditation on the ideas of unity and hope and the American dream so eloquently described by Martin Luther King Jr. on August 28th. 1963. He said, one day this nation will rise up 
and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming bassoonist Shelley Maro Huang and triennial composer in residence, Huang Ruo. Thank you. Hello, everyone. What you will hear is a piece I wrote called Wind Blows. It's a meditation meant to bring you into this vast sonic landscape where one can get lost in it, uh, freely wandering, surrounded by the endless wind.
Thank you, Shelly and Wang Ro, for that moving performance. And thank you, Agnes, for that very thoughtful introduction. My name is Ken Tan, and I'm the Executive Director of Global Artistic Programs and Deputy Director of the Asia Society Museum. Today, July 9th, is definitely significant for many historical reasons. As Agnes had mentioned in her introduction, this evening's program and the performance you had just enjoyed was inspired by the painting Pulling Down the Statue of King George III by Johannes Ortel, who so vividly captured the events that took place on this very day, July 9th in 1776. Considered one of the most important paintings in American art, this monumental painting is in the museum collection of the New York Historical Society. I'm very excited to share that it will be featured in our Asia Society Triennial Joint Exhibition with New York Historical Society, titled Dreaming Together. And that's slated to open a week before our triennial on October 23rd. So do look forward to see this painting and many more from both Asian Society's collection and New York Historical Society's collection side by side for the very first time. So now waiting after his performance with me is Huang Ro, who has been, uh, I think he's now ready for our conversation. So uh, let's invite Huang Ro into our screen. Um, I understand July 9th is, his, is significant for a few reasons and something a little bit more personal for you, Wang Ro. Um, today is also a very special day for someone in your life. Can you share a little bit more about that, please? Hi, hi, Ken. Thanks for, uh, first of all, thanks for having us to perform live. Sure. And, uh, to share this wonderful moment. Uh, actually, uh, um, today also is the uh, birthday of uh, uh, our son, Nyquist. And uh, so it has, been, wow. a, Happy know, has <laughs> been a very busy day so far. So we managed to uh, you know, celebrate with him a little bit and uh, get everything ready. Uh, so um, yeah, so for us, um, you know, uh, with Nyquist, uh, he is turning seven now. Um, and he is, um, um, uh, I should just say, um, you know, half Asian and half uh, uh, Caucasian. So, uh, and uh, so to us is uh, uh, the name Nyquist means a new branch. Uh, so he is a new branch uh, for us uh, in this country. I see. So also we are honored to have you here uh, with our triennial as our composer in residence. Um, but as an Asian artist in America, what are some of the important issues that you're trying to speak through your works? Because I think, um, especially today, um, and also the times that we're living in is a very uh, special times. So um, do you have some thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, um, uh, I think what is uh, important is, um, you know, um, uh, under this pandemic, uh, we all, um, if we all been affected one way or the other, mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, with all this um, uncertainty, and uh, uh, we have a July Fourth celebration just, uh, you know, several days ago, and I was uh, uh, watching, you know, and I was playing firework. Um, and I have this urge. I wanted to tell him, uh, you know, uh, uh, do you know who invented the firework? Uh, uh, and then uh, suddenly there was an uh, invisible hand was choking me, uh, warned me not to say anything. Uh, this is very real and very, you know, strange feeling. So I, I, my, my words are up here and then I could not spread it out because I worry that if I tell him, okay, it was... Um, you know, uh, 
Chinese invented the firework, and you are, you know, uh, you have uh, the Chinese heritage in you as well. So I'm right. just afraid, you know, uh, if he tell other people, he might got as discriminated um, at school or in the future. So, um, so unfortunately, I did not get to tell him that um, on July 4th. And I thought about that uh, overnight. Um, and the next day, I, I feel I must tell him. So that's what I did. And I feel proud and good to share with him that heritage. Uh, yes, we are all in this together. And um, unfortunately, the anti-Asian and anti-Asian American uh, racism does occur under this divided COVID-19 world. Uh, but my hope is as a composer uh, to use music to, to help to, to heal and help people to find uh, hope and find uh, some um, unity uh, under these uh, circumstances and hopefully after the pandemic world. Yeah, definitely like the piece that you just played, um, it definitely has, without using words, it has uh, uh, a higher level of uh, essence to be able to move someone into, into feeling a certain way. Um, I also am curious, like when you are composing, especially in, uh, in, in the very special times that we are in now, I think it's very ever more challenging for performing arts as well. Um, how do you actually maintain your creativity? How do you actually uh, still continue to innovate? Is there uh, some sort of uh, practices you do every day? What's your process like? How do you, uh, where do you get your inspiration? Do you do yoga? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I should say that uh, when, um, you know, when the close down started in March, uh, I was, um, you know, I went through this period of uh, numbness, not able to uh, uh, do anything or write anything. Uh, and I remember, um, you know, I had a very similar feeling uh, when I was in New York, when uh, 911 happened. Uh, I also went through the very similar feeling, except this time it seemed to last longer. Um, and uh, um, what helped me a lot was uh, through music, actually. Uh, I stopped what I was working on at that point because I just could not write. Uh, and then I started to writing um, uh, a, a music for strings. Um, it's called Dust, uh, A Dust in Time. Uh, so it, it's a meditation piece. It's my own meditation and medicine to help me to get back on track, to get out of that darkness, uh, that numbness. Uh, so I truly hope that to have a chance to uh, uh, to share that piece live with uh, everyone in the future. We hope to hear that piece live as well sometime in the future. Yes. Um, the, so, you know, despite all this, despite uh, the stay home and the quarantine, there is some um, positivity that has come out from um, in recent news. Uh, I do understand that your latest album um, has been recently released that's Into the Vast World. So you, maybe you want to share a little bit more about that, like, you know, your thoughts on that album and, and just some background info for us. Yes. Um, you know, the strange thing about uh, um, the pandemic is uh, CD could still be safely released <laughs> and uh, we don't need to perform live on a CD. Uh, so this CD has been uh, 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 several years of making. Uh, we recorded last year uh, and uh, it was uh, performed by the Shanghai Philharmonic Orchestra. Uh, so we originally planned to release um, this June and right before the opening of my uh, new opera with the uh, playwright David Henry Huang uh, and Butterfly at Santa Fe Opera. Uh, unfortunately, um, the Santa Fe Opera season has to be canceled and same as our opera. Uh, but the CD was not canceled. It still went into making and uh, was able to see the light of it at the end of June. 
uh, is called Into the Vast World. Uh, I chose that title because I often felt that um, who we are, where we came from, uh, det uh, determines how we create music. Uh, so for me, I, am, uh, I came from the East and uh, right now live in the West. My journey has been uh, about experiencing differences in our life, in our culture, and uh, uh, in um, different history, uh, different uh, sound. So for me, uh, it's a curiosity that uh, triggered me to create uh, all kinds of music. So the CD is called Into the Vast World. It collects um, a lot of symphonic music I wrote for the past 20 years and also uh, two excerpts from my uh, recent opera, An American Soldier, uh, also collaboration with uh, David Henry Huang on mm -hmm. the life and death of uh, Danny Chen. Uh, so to me, this um, brings out um, different uh, uh, spectrum of my writing. Uh, so it was fortunate that the CD could come out and to be able to share with everyone uh, and uh, I look forward to uh, to have uh, uh, more music to be released in the future as well. That's that's very wonderful news. So again, thank you and bravo, bravo. Thank you, you, thank you, you and Shelley. Thank and you. I'm so glad that uh, our uh, triennial will be able to be rescheduled this autumn, and I truly look forward to uh, the opening and to be able to meet uh, with other artists to together to uh, work with the triennial. Thank you. We and will all come out in the fall yeah, and we'll meet <laughs> again. Yes. Okay, thank you. So to close this evening's program, we have a very, uh, we have a surprise guest actually, uh, an update by our Vice President of Global Artistic Programs, museum director, who is also our Triennial's artistic director, Tan Bun Hui. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And I trust you enjoy this evening's recital featuring bassoonist Shirley Monroe Huang and composer Huang Ruo. My name is Bun Hui Tan, and I'm the artistic director of the inaugural Asia Society Triennial 2020 and director of the Asia Society Museum. This evening's program marks the 4th of July Independence Day weekend that just happened. The founding of a nation, admittedly a work in progress in many places around the world, is at one level a dream. A dream of what Benedict Anderson calls an imagined community. A group of people who come together with the dream, with the hope, of leaving behind the shackles of the old worlds which they had fought many times bitterly to escape. And a nation is a very strange construct in the sense that many of its citizens will never in their lifetimes ever meet every other one of their compatriots. But yet they are all united by this dream of this community that is possible, even if only at the level of ideology, of emotion, of spirituality, of belief, of values. This idea of the democratic nation being the product of dreams, of dreaming, resonates deeply with the theme of the inaugural Asia Society Triennial entitled We Do Not Dream Alone. The triennials with its exhibitions, film program, performing arts program, looks at the voices of artists as a way to overcome loneliness, as a way in this world of division, in this world where we are physically separate and ideologically embattled, a way in which art can connect us, can show us that we have something in common, not just to our neighbours, not just to somebody down the block in another city, but somebody halfway around the world. 
that to be an imagined community is not only to be a nation, but to be a people, to be humanity. That, I believe very deeply, is the role of art today. Art is essential to overcome this tendency for us to be strangers. For the next step to being strangers is to be enemies. And that is truly a terrible world to live in, as well as it betraying uh, the wishes and the hopes and the struggles of all those who had gone before us to fight, who laid down their lives for what we have today. So we hope you will come to the Asia Society Triennial as well as to the slew of programs that we will have, uh, such as this one, virtual programs in the lead up. The Triennial opens in the fall on October the 27th and will unfold over a duration of eight months until June of 2021. So please come and dream with us. Come and imagine a new community with us and with all the artists, such as Huang Ro, who is, of course, the composer in residence and a featured artist of the Triennial. Sign up for our emailers at asiasocietytriennial.org and join our Imagine community. Stay safe, keep well, and we hope to see you very soon.